Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be talking about what chords are and how to use them. Chords are one of the most fundamental things in music and there are lots of different types of chords that have lots of different functions in music and it can be very confusing sometimes as to what the point is. Why do we have chords and why do they have names when it's just a series of notes together? Well in this video I'm going to try and explain what chords are and how we use them. So firstly what are chords? Well the definition of a chord is just more than one note together. However, that doesn't really help when it comes to learning chords to play on the piano or any other instrument. So we're first going to talk about standard chords and triads. In music, we use scales to play songs and pieces so that we narrow down the amount of notes that we're using in a song. I have done previous videos on scales and how to read piano music, so be sure to check those out after this video if you need any further help with that. However, for this video, we're just going to use the key of C major and the scale of C major as an example. So if we were playing a song in C major, we would only use the white notes in the piano. This is because the notes in that scale are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then you're back to C again. So what this does is it excludes all of the black notes on the piano. And we can form something called a triad by playing the first, the third, and the fifth note of this scale. So in this case, that would be C, E, and G. This is called a major triad and in this particular case that's a C major triad. In the key of C we can form a triad starting on each of the notes of the scale. So for example chord number two in the key of C major is a D chord and that's D, F and A and that's actually a D minor triad. The quick rule for working out whether something is major or minor is that if there is a gap of three keys between the first two notes and a gap of two keys between the second two notes then that's a major chord and if there is a gap of two keys between the first two notes and three keys between the second two notes, then that's a minor chord. However, in every major scale, the pattern is as follows. Chord number one is a major chord. Chord number two is minor. Chord number three is minor. Chord number four is major. Chord number five is major. Chord number six is minor. And chord number seven is something called a diminished chord. A diminished chord is slightly different to the first six chords because that has a gap of two and then another gap of two. So if you are playing something in the key of C major or you're improvising in a key of C major, these are the seven chords that you are going to find. If you find any other chords that aren't these seven chords, then you are changing key and you are changing the scale that you are then using. This does happen quite a lot in music, but just to simplify things, we're gonna stay in C major for now. Once you know all seven of these chords and what notes they include, you can do different things to these chords and the first one of these is called playing it in different inversions. So if you play the chord in its normal formation then this is called a root position chord. So for example C, E and G is a root position C major chord. If you then take that C and put it on the top of the chord rather than at the bottom then this is called a first inversion chord. You can then repeat this process so that the E then goes to the top as well and this is called a second inversion chord. Not only do we have seven chords that we can use in this particular song but we also have different orders of the notes that we can find and this is why it starts to become slightly more confusing because if you are looking at a piece of music it isn't always immediately obvious which triad you are looking at and you can develop this over time as long as you can narrow it down to those seven chords to start with so now that you have those seven chords we can start adding notes to those chords to change the quality of sound and change what they do so if we play a c major chord in the key of c major and we add the seventh note in the scale as well. So this would be C, E, G, and B. This is called a major seventh chord, and it has a much more jazzy quality to it. If we do the same thing to a minor chord in the key of C, so for example, D minor, we have D, F, A, and C and this is called a D minor seven chord. And this has a bit more of a darker tone, bluesy, jazzy sound to it. Listening to these types of chords and hearing the quality of sound can really enhance your improvisation because you can use these types of chords in your improvisations to find the quality of sound that you were looking for. Not only this, but if you're reading a piece of music that has these chords in, you already have a pre-existing knowledge of what this chord might mean or what it might sound like. You can also add different notes to chords. For example, C, E, G, and A is a C major six chord because instead of adding the seventh note, you've added the six. And you can add notes above the next C as well. So for example, C9 would be C, E, G, and D. And each time you add these notes, it doesn't change the actual fundamental chord. It's still a C major triad, but you're just adding different qualities of sound to that chord. You can also take notes away from these chords. So for example, if you see a piece where it just has a C and an E, 
This doesn't mean that it's not a C major chord because it doesn't have the G. It can still be a C major chord, but it could also be chord number six, which is an A minor chord, because this chord also includes these two notes. And sometimes pieces or songs do this where they emit notes in order to create some ambiguity and make you as a listener try and interpret what's going on. Even if you have no understanding of music as a listener, because of the exposure to music, you will have expectations of what you're expecting to hear next when listening to something. And a lot of musicians use chords to play with this expectation. So for example, chord number five in a key, so in C major this would be a G chord and that would be G, B and D. This often goes back to chord number one, which would be a C chord, C, E and G. And because most listeners are expecting this, especially at the end of a phrase or at the end of a song, if you change the direction that that chord is gonna go, for example, if you go from chord number five to chord number six, from a G chord, G, B and D, to an A minor chord, A, C and E, then this doesn't sound wrong, but it does change what we're expecting and keeps interest. Now chords that are used in pieces of music such as classical music are different to chords that are used in improvisation. So when you are reading a piece of music, a chord is not necessarily several notes at the same time. We can have something called implied chords. And what this means is that you can have multiple notes that form a chord that are one after the other or that they're across two hands in different places. But that fragment of music forms the chord and ultimately that's what you hear as a listener. You hear a shading of one chord. And if you are trying to learn piano, this is why chords become a bit more difficult because you're no longer looking for the straightforward chords that you would expect. But you're also trying to interpret what chord that might be or what that might mean for the piece or if a chord means that it's changing key or is that just an added note to a chord and there are different functions of different chords in pieces that we can use to interpret how we think it should be played. For example, if we use chord 5 in C major again, which is G, B, D, and we add the 7th, which is an F, this is something called a dominant 7th chord. The reason it's called a dominant 7th chord is because the technical name of note number 5 in a scale is called the dominant. So we're playing the dominant chord with an extra 7th note. The function of a dominant 7th chord is that it confirms the key, it confirms the scale that we are using. So in C major, if we play G, B, D and F, we know we have to be in C major because G is chord 5 of C. And the reason for this is that if you had a key that had one flat in it, that would be a B flat. And G, B, D and F has a normal B in the chord. So this cancels out the ability for this particular song to be in any of the keys that have flats in them because all the keys that have flats in them have a B flat. In the same way, this chord also has a normal F in it. And in all of the keys that have sharps in them, they all have F sharps in them, which means that this chord can only be in one scale, and that's C major. I know this might be slightly confusing, but the more you see dominant seventh chords within pieces, the more you realize that every single time it's doing exactly the same thing. And if you are writing a piece of music, you can finish a song with a dominant seventh chord and then chord one and this will make the piece sound finished because that is the function that a dominant seventh has and that doesn't mean you just have to play two chords one after the other you can reorder the notes or you can play them separately or you could miss out some notes and then just imply the chord and when it comes to improvisation you can use chords like major chords minor chords diminished chords major sevenths minor sevenths dominant sevenths in order to get the quality of sound that you want and you will hear chord progressions that you like and you'll remember them and it will vastly improve your improvisation just by understanding what chords are and how to use them. I know the topic of chords is a big one and it can be very confusing, so if you have any questions about chords, then leave those in the comments and I will be sure to answer them. And if you found this video useful, then hit me with a like and subscribe and I will see you next time.